Here we go. Welcome to another episode of On Campus. I'm McKenna Guerrero, and today I'm joined with Christine Manny. Thank you so much for joining me here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now, you are the master of theater here, so can you please tell us your story and kind of how it led you here to Solano? Um, I actually started um, after high school, theater classes were here at Solano for me. It started mm -hmm. out here. It um, started out in this room. Um, it started out um, with all the joy of theater, et cetera. And uh, then when I continued on, I wanted to become a teacher, wanted to give love back to the students, et cetera. I went off and started teaching, fell back into theater and teaching theater, and then I lucked out and I got here in the last year. So um, now I get to broaden my horizons, I guess, with students. Um, we're not only working now at Solano College, but we have all the high schools in our outreach program trying to bring them over here and show uh -huh. them that theater is still alive wow. and that Solano has it. So I'm going to take you back a few years growing up. <laughs> did you always love theater? Did you want to become like an actress or what was kind of that whole thing? Uh, I was always a performer. Okay. Uh, from a very, very young age, I was always mm -hmm. a performer. Um, uh, my parents might like to say exhibitionist uh -huh. in some ways. But uh, no, I loved uh, dancing, I loved singing, I loved performing. You know, I'd do the whole garage uh, performances with my brother and things like that. Um, took some dance classes when I was younger, uh, but didn't go very far with those, just life was different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I fell back into it a little bit in high school and then college uh, pushed even further. So it was a lot of fun. And I didn't necessarily say I was gonna go out and be an actress and that's my goal and that's yeah. my A number one. I decided that I needed, I needed to have some grounding, I needed to have some other things to do. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I really wanted to teach. And it's, it's sad because so many students say they want to yeah. teach, but I, that really was one of my big ones and showing passion and taking my passion and love for literature and for plays and things like that and bringing it back to other people was huge for me. Did you ever have a favorite play that you like to go watch or is there still one that you like to go and watch? Um, I have a favorite author and then okay. a favorite play. Uh, my favorite author, and it's gonna sound very cliche, but it was William Shakespeare. Uh, the first play I ever read for fun uh, was Hamlet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a, an English teacher friend. She said, he, you know, try this. Mm -hmm. And I was in high school at the time. And I'm like, you know, this is for fun. And she goes, yeah, try it. And I, I did. And I go, oh, my gosh, this was amazing. There's so much intricacy in the way he describes things and, and just the way to make us think in a different way. And it blew my mind. And from that moment on, I was just in love with it. And, and I think my favorite play in general would be Midsummer Night's Dream, which is also William Shakespeare. So, so you went to Sex State. You were telling me a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, kind of, what was your experience like there? Um, Sex State. I was uh, really concentrating on going towards my degree in um, teaching. So I was going for uh, teaching English and going that direction. Um, by the by, the time I went over to Sex State, I had two children and a husband and a uh -huh. home. So, um, so. I wasn't able to necessarily go off and live the bohemian lifestyle uh -huh. and, and forget about the world. So it was important for me to kind of see that side. When I went off and started teaching, I fell back into theater. It was very quickly. And mm -hmm. then uh, I fell into a dance program as well. So I, I, was, I taught at Venetia High School and I ended up running their theater program, their dance program, um, and most of their performing arts minus the band program. So it was... Um, a joy yeah. and an adventure, and I still love Benicia, and I still love the the students there and the location and um, and the environment in general. But Solano was just going over these huge bumps mm -hmm. in in theater. The theater world here has made a big changeover, and uh, and I knew I could help, and so that's where I wanted to be. So I know there's that saying in theater, there's no small parts, there's <laughs> only small actors. Right. So do you think to be successful in the theater, you kind of have to know all the aspects, stage, yeah. lighting, all of that? Absolutely. I think it's, it's hugely helpful. As a matter of fact, that's why our degrees here are really 
trying to get students to be well-rounded in that mm -hmm. sense, trying to make sure that they see all those different elements, that they understand all the different elements, that they try all the different elements. Um, one of the things that people, you know, think about, oh, it's such a dangerous world to go out and try to be an actor. Yeah. But if you have all of these other elements involved, if you understand all of those other things, you have something to fall back on. You have something else. You have other talents and other skills. And you might find that you love the theater world, but maybe acting isn't necessarily your only thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that still is a joy and a passion and a love, but perhaps your paycheck comes from working in a different part of the field. So it's... I like the fact that our students have the ability to explore all of the different elements and we're constantly trying to expand those explorations for them as well. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And now it's your second year as a full-time staff mm -hmm. member here. What is it about Solano that keeps you staying here? Uh, one of the things for me is that it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen so much even in the last year and a half that I've been here uh, it, it it's constantly changing and, and it's not just our department with our new theater it's it's every aspect every time we have a department meeting or I speak with another instructor everyone is looking towards the future everyone's looking towards advancing Solano College mm -hmm. students uh, advancing technology advancing to the place the place where students can go for any avenue and I love that Mm -hmm. um, it's so it's it's really exciting, and I think people for for a little while we're starting to write Solano off, going oh yeah. no you know oh my gosh if they would come over and take a look now it's it's just it's eye catching yeah. and it's it, it's always exciting to be here. Well, what do you hope that your students gain from your theater program in all of your classes? Um, as much as I would love to have every one of my students go off and be you know 100 percent successful in theater mm -hmm. um, as an actor as a technician as anything along those lines that's not always the only end goal so mm -hmm. one of the things I always look at is making sure that they're someone who's comfortable speaking in front of an audience someone who's uh, able to interpret literature able to think outside the box mm -hmm. think in different ways in designing and and anticipating emotional outreach to different people, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many aspects of theater uh, that it's more than just acting. It's more than yeah. just tech. Um, the, the psychological aspects in general are humongous and help a person become a little bit more well-rounded in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes they'll get so grounded into math and science and English and, and they're just looking at the end goal to get to their next step, but they forget about making sure that they're happy somewhere inside too and that they understand and relate to the world. So exactly. hoping that they keep relating yeah. <laughs> to the world, not just a screen is part of my part of my goal, I guess. Well, what do you kind of expect from them kind of when they get into the program? I expect them to try. Okay. I expect them to experience, mm -hmm. um, to be inventive. Uh, one of the things I've noticed in my last few decades of teaching is with the um, invention of the cell phone, Yeah, <laughs> things have changed. Um, one of the things we tend to do these days is if we're at a doctor's office or an appointment or just waiting, we're, mm -hmm. we're just waiting, everybody picks up the cell phone, they do this. And if you go back in time, before those cell phones existed, more often than not, people let their minds work whether it was sure. reading or simply daydreaming. Yeah. I'm, the concept of daydreaming is getting lost in our society. Yeah. And that inventive nature is, mm -hmm. in my mind, how we create something new, how we invent new aspects of the world that we live in. So trying to get students to open up their minds to that, mm -hmm. to not let fear overtake them, not not hide behind a screen that's exactly. that's a big part of what so you think we're hoping that kind of makes people more closed-minded now I'm not sure if it's entirely closed-minded mm -hmm. um, they're definitely influenced um, you know anybody goes to Facebook and they believe everything that's on it yeah that's true um, uh, they also have a tendency to I mean I, I do it as well mm -hmm. so I mean I, I get oh, it yeah yeah but we have a tendency to not let our minds just wander mm -hmm. to not let our minds create new pathways um, where we feed it you know baby food instead of actually something you can bite your teeth into and I think that that's 
that's something that we need to look at as a culture. And if we lose this concept of live performance, mm -hmm. being in front of another real human being, dealing with emoting with another human being, um, we're going to be losing something very valuable to human nature. That's very true. Mm. Now you have an outstanding show. Can you kind of tell us all about that and just how sure. that process has been? Sure. Um, it's our first show in the new theater, uh -huh. so it's it's been a it's been one heck of a journey getting here. Um, the show's called Peter and the Starcatcher. Okay. It's based on uh, some books that were originally written as a prequel to Peter Pan, so kind of before Peter became Peter, before Captain Hook became Hook, okay. before uh, well, before Wendy even mm -hmm. existed. Oh, wow. So um, although. Her family is still in there, and you get to meet her mother, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, the story basically is, like I said, a, a prequel to Peter Pan, mm -hmm. and it's where Peter is just getting to Neverland, just getting to understand uh, the world around him, and, and he really literally changes uh, based on this idea of star stuff, oh, wow. which is kind of what we would, if we go back in time and think about our own thoughts of Peter Pan, it mm -hmm. would be pixie dust. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and immediately when people say Peter Pan, they go, oh, it's a kid's show. Mm -hmm. eh, it's not necessarily a yeah. kid's show. It's, it's okay for kids. It's okay. It's suitable for all ages, but, um, but the jokes are definitely for adults. Mm -hmm. um, there are, are a lot of uh, anachronisms, in a, in a sense, which means things that we would hear nowadays mm -hmm. are in the show, and quite hilarious, actually. Now, what a lot of people probably don't know is that having a show, it's a process. I mean, you have rehearsals, you got preparation time. Can you kind of walk us through like a normal day of just preparing for a show or? Um, well, uh, we started the process. I actually started the process last year. Okay. Um, so we, uh, I had multiple students come in and we did kind of a staged reading of the show back in May of last year, just so, p because it's not a show people necessarily know a lot about. Yeah. So we said, well, let's, let's just kind of read it as a group. You can hear what it's about, decide if you want to come audition, that type of thing. Um, we're about to do another one of those readings for our spring show. Uh, and then we had auditions in August mm -hmm. and then it became a three and a half to four hour rehearsal every night, Monday okay. through Thursday. Our Monday, Tuesday, we kept Wednesdays out mm -hmm. this semester because we have a Wednesday night theater class. Uh -huh. um, so Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday we'd have sh have rehearsals, and then we'd also have rehearsals on Sundays. So um, a lot of hours, yeah. a lot of hours going into it, and that's just in the rehearsal process with myself mm -hmm. as the director and my students. We have about we have eighteen students in the class, and. Uh, and then, of course, on the side of that, we would also have production meetings and things where we're doing design work. Mm -hmm. um, we have a set designer, lighting designer, sound designer, costume designer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a lot of work going into it. Yeah. yeah. The day of the actual show, is your mind kind of like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do? Or are you kind of like calm by then? By the, by the day of the actual show, officially my job's done. Okay. Um, in in the real theater world, mm -hmm. the director is not there after opening night. The okay. director says goodbye, and that's that's a tough one, especially in educational theater. It's a yeah. tough one for students to kind of understand because they're you know especially in high school, oh their their director was always there. Uh -huh. um, but but the idea is a director's job is to fix things and adjust and correct and move them around and make mm -hmm. make this thing happen. By the time we get down to the actual day of the show. It should be there. It yeah. should be done. Now that's not always the case, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but the students I have right now, the cast is just, they're amazing. And some of them, for some of them, it's their very first show. Some of mm -hmm. them they've done many shows with us or elsewhere. And uh, overall, they've really become a really cohesive group. That's good. Really amazing, especially since the, we have two musicians in the show who are uh -huh. playing live music. The other 16 people are on stage almost the entire show. Wow. So it's That's it's incredible. a lot of work and a lot of time that they invested too. You guys kind of get that family aspect. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, and I've I've done many many shows, mm -hmm. and uh, both as a performer, as a, a director, as a choreographer, and um, this one may be one of the biggest family ones, mm -hmm. just for the fact that they have to deal with each other in such close quarters for so long. They don't get to go off stage and hang out as much. They get to be on stage and mm -hmm. hang out. So uh, yes, we had, let me see, we had a, 
a birthday a couple days ago. We have another birthday coming up tonight, or oh, two wow. birthdays coming up tonight. And so yeah, no, everyone celebrates everything, and they um, they really do become a family. So what is kind of your favorite part? Is it kind of sitting back and watching just the whole thing unravel? Do you kind of get like a sense of joy after? I think I get a sense of joy in every different element of it. Mm -hmm. it, it I think all of us in our department do, um, as you see one progression after another, and you see the students learning, you see them understanding things. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I think one of the things is every time, every time the cast or a student or whoever, um, kind of a light bulb goes off and they click. Every time that happens, you go, yes, <laughs> that's it. And yeah. they find something new and they find something original and they, and they kind of take ownership to it. And that's kind of a beautiful moment. And I love seeing those. And there's so many of those as we go along with the process. And then um, it's always interesting once the show actually opens. It's almost bittersweet for me because yeah. then I go, my job's done. Mm -hmm. I could take notes, but I shouldn't. You know, I, I could tell them more, but I shouldn't. They, I need to let them grow. And what I saw with their first opening weekend for the show was they, they really did. That's really good. Yeah, it was lovely. So <laughs> after one chapter open, I mean closes, do you kind of move on to the next? Like, are you already starting for your next show? Yes, wow. absolutely. Uh, I, we've got. <laughs> Uh, we've got the script ready to go. Mm -hmm. We're having our first production meeting next week. Um, I'm already doing work on it. We've talked about advertisement for the additions and stuff already. So yes, it's it's a constant, ongoing machine. That even you know, summers, vacations. It's always looking at you know what's going next and how we're going to move to the next step. So, what advice do you have to give to students that want to come to Solano and kind of pursue their arts and theater? Well, number one, do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sincerely, if, if it's something you love, uh, whether it's going to be your full career mm -hmm. or if it's going to be a minor or simply something you just love and that's your hobby, do it. Um, be, be honest with yourself about it, but do it. Try it. Take a class. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let the fact that maybe you'd be new to Solano or you're not sure if you know anybody, don't let any of that hold you back. Um, come try to audition. Just, just audition. And that would be anywhere. Just go out and try it. Because the biggest thing you've got to get over is that hurdle of your own, that fear factor. That's Once true. you get past the fear factor, you can do it. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm really looking forward to your next shows okay. and so and just what's to come for the theater program. Fantastic. Thank you. For, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> this was another episode of On Campus. I'm McKenna Guerrero and we'll see you next time. The exponential growth from the program from my first year to my third year now that's what keeps me coming back and keeps me excited and just like fulfills me as a person I've been taking classes here for years now so I've never actually had a class that I enjoyed quite like this one you no know, I think it teaches you a lot about conf I mean it's confidence building to me it's so impressive and we, we every time we walk in here you guys are doing something different it's, it's great it's great nothing but opportunities here and we have sports to cover we have the equipment because the more ambitious you are the more opportunities you'll have and POF with this program lets you be as ambitious as you want and lets you express yourself the way a teacher should let you. So like I said it's really gratifying to us to be able to help in a way where we can see immediate results and I think the sky's the limit really with what we can do here. Get the hands-on experience. I mean on-the-job training is, is huge. Yeah. It's huge in this industry. Joining the class is the best decision I ever made. Cut three, cut three, cut three, hold the shot. Snap on, we're gonna go to cut one.